Over the years, I've tried many backup solutions for my ever-growing terabytes of data, from Time Machine on the low end to Retrospect on the high end, using everything from spreading data over stacks of random USB hard drives to raiding USB drives with soft raid. Top tip, don't do that. And I finally settled on a solution that nearly six months in is working very, very well. Let's get into it. I'm Photo Joseph. I'm a content creator who started in photography and now does mostly video, and I really miss when I could back up my entire archive on one of these. Today, my online fast storage consists of two RAIDs. The big one is a very fast eSATA four drive bay from OWC with four 10 terabyte drives striped as RAID zero for 40 terabytes of storage that clocks in around 850 megabytes per second read and write speeds. That one's named Beast. RAID 0, if you're not familiar, spreads data across all drives and gives the best performance, but if one drive fails, you lose everything. So it's risky, but it's the cheapest way to get really fast performance. The second RAID is a smaller NVMe 4x1 terabyte RAID, also from OWC and also striped as RAID 0, for 4 terabytes total, clocking in at a whopping 2,000 megabytes per second read and write speed. That one is named Beauty. Generally, I use Beauty as my primary drive for multicam projects and as my FCP cache, and then move data to Beast when done with a project, or sometimes I just use Beast for larger, maybe non-multicam projects. Not that I can't edit multicam from Beast, but it's just smoother using the NVMe RAID. Anyway, because this is all RAID 0, that data is at high risk, so needs a nightly backup. I'll skip the horror stories of failed solutions and nearly lost data and go straight to what I'm doing today that I love and that works. It starts with a Netgear ReadyNAS 2312. NAS stands for Networked Attached Storage and is basically just a standalone volume that's accessible over a network. This ReadyNAS has 12 drive bays, which do not have to be filled up all at once. I'll come back to that. And is rack mounted, which works well for me. You can buy NAS solutions from lots of different companies, desktop or rack mounted. I chose this one because at under $1,000, it was a great price point for what I needed. And while it doesn't have 10 gigabit speeds or many of the features found in higher end NAS solutions from companies like Synology or QNAP, which if you're interested in that kind of a solution, I highly recommend watching a video by Armando, which I'll link to at the end of this video and, and down below. Anyway, my intention was never to edit from this NAS, but just to use it as a backup. Towards the end of this video, I'll cover some additional uses I've found for the server, but they're all bonus features. The Netgear NAS runs ReadyNAS OS, a Linux operating system that you control through a web interface. And the drive system is something called X-Raid. One of the biggest challenges I've had with backup systems in the past is finding a single large enough volume to back up to today that's expandable for the future. It's easy to plan for, say, 40 terabytes of backup and build a solution on that, but then when your needs grow, you have to start over. Most backup software solutions don't handle spanning multiple drives, so you can't just expand by adding another cheap USB drive, nor do they handle replacing dead drives very well or at all. So potential growth is always a pain in the ass. X-RAID, what the ReadyNAS uses, is an expandable RAID, and it's fully automatic. You can start the X-RAID volume with just a single drive, although there's not much point to that. You'll probably want to start with at least three, and I started mine with five 12 terabyte NAS rated drives. And when you have up to five drives in the ReadyNAS, X-RAID is automatically configured as a RAID 5. RAID 5 uses something called parity, distributing parity data among all the drives and uses about one drive's worth of space for parity storage. This parity means that you give up about one drive's worth of storage in your RAID volume. However, any single drive in the volume can die and you'll lose no data. You just replace that dead drive and the RAID will rebuild itself. And with X-RAID, as soon as you add a sixth drive, it automatically converts to RAID 6, which uses two drives worth of parity data, so any two drives can fail with no data loss. That does, however, mean that with five drives, you're only getting four drives worth of storage, and with six drives, you're also only getting four drives worth of storage. However, you're gaining a lot of security and peace of mind. I recently added two more drives for a total of seven, meaning that when I started at RAID 5, I had four times 12 terabytes for 48 terabytes of storage, and now I have five times 12 terabytes for 60 terabytes of storage. But now every drive I add on top of this will expand my storage by another 12 terabytes. Okay, so that's the physical storage sorted. I can expand this all the way up to 120 terabytes with all 12 terabyte drives and grow it as I need. Now let's talk about the software. 
I'm on macOS, and there's a great app that's been around forever called Carbon Copy Cloner, or CCC. CCC can schedule automated copies of specific files or folders or entire volumes to any destination, including across a network. It'll automatically mount and unmount network volumes as needed, and the copy it builds is literally a clone, meaning that you can browse your backup and access files from it just like your original drive. There's no proprietary software like Time Machine or recovery scripts to run like with Retrospect to access your data. You don't need CCC to see your backups. It's as easy as mounting the backup volume and copying the files you need from it. Carbon Copy Cloner also has a great feature called Safety Net, where any files that are removed from your drive don't just get deleted on the backup, but instead get moved to a dated Safety Net folder. So if you accidentally delete a file, you can dig into the safety net to find it. By the way, if you're finding this video useful, please do hit that like and subscribe button and maybe even share the video. Every click helps, thanks. Anyway, so that's the base hardware and the software, but what is CC actually looking for when it comes to backing up? My ReadyNAS is 60 terabytes of raw storage, but remember, this isn't a macOS volume. In the ReadyNAS interface, which again is accessible over a web browser, I can create shares as SMB or AFP volumes or a variety of other types, which mount on macOS as a network volume. Think of it like a virtual volume. I can create as many shares as I like, and here's the best part, I don't need to define a size for the share. Every share has access to the entire 60 terabytes, and as that 60 terabytes grows as I add more drives, so does the available space for the shares. So for my backup strategy, I chose to create a share for every volume that I'm backing up. This just makes sense to me. If I need a file that was on Beauty, I pull up the Beauty backup share and there it is. Even if I never add more local online high speed storage, the bigger I make the X-Raid, the more data I can leave in the safety net. And if I want to trim the size of the backup, I can delete older folders from the safety net with confidence and obviously I can browse them before I do. And I can just create another share to use as network storage for say old projects that I wanna clear off my main system. So it's really flexible. So every night CCC mounts a share volume copies all the new data to that volume, moves all the deleted data to the safety net folder, and then moves to the next backup script repeating for the next volume. I also have a USB drive attached directly to my Mac that CCC mounts and unmounts automatically so I never have to see it, and backs up the internal drive to nightly, which is a bootable backup. This means if my internal drive goes poof, I can reboot from the USB drive and keep on working. And as soon as I replace the dead drive, CCC can clone from the USB backup right back to the new internal drive. This is also a great way to save yourself from unexpected problems with an OS update. If you upgrade to the latest OS and discover too late that some critical apps or plugins don't work, you can restore to the previous OS from your backup. Or use the backup or an additional copy of the backup as a way to test a new OS before you commit to it. Now, what about cloud backup? A proper backup strategy requires both an on-site and an off-site backup. The ReadyNAS will allow you to clone the entire system or any portion of it to pretty much every common cloud storage system, including Amazon S3, Wasabi, and Azure, and even consumer cloud storage solutions like Amazon Drive, Google Drive, or Dropbox. Obviously, this only works if you have sufficient bandwidth to back up to the cloud reasonably quickly, but the system is there, and you can throttle it to whatever bandwidth you want so it's not hogging your entire upload bandwidth. Now granted, cloud storage for tens of terabytes can get really expensive really quickly, but I'll tell you what I figured out. If you have the Dropbox Business Advance plan with at least three seats, you get unlimited storage. If you pay by the month, it's $25 per user. But if you pay for the whole year at once, it's $20 per user or $60 a month, which is $720 for the year, which is an incredible price for unlimited storage. Just don't forget to set that Dropbox folder you're backing up to as online only in all of your systems, or it'll start to sync all that backup data down to every computer that you have. I might have forgotten to set that on one of my machines and found it filling up with my NAS backup. Anyway, mine is slowly trickling up. I've got about six terabytes up there so far, but one of these days I'm going to take advantage of a friend's gigabit connection and hook up my NAS in his office for a few days and try to catch up. Alternatively, with certain business class ReadyNAS models, you can use something called ReadyDR for disaster recovery and automatically clone your NAS to another NAS somewhere else. Mine doesn't support that, although there might be other ways to achieve the same thing if that's what you want to do. I said at the beginning that the ReadyNAS gave me some bonus features that I've been taking advantage of. It has a whole app space where you can install all kinds of services on the NAS, like setting it up as a Plex server or using Resilio Sync. Come to think of it, Resilio Sync could be a pretty good way to clone this NAS to another NAS somewhere else in the world. 
Cool. Anyway, you can install all kinds of server apps, and I've installed PHP because I use a PHP-based service to remotely control this bank of Hyperdex. That's a really cool configuration for another video. It, of course, can also serve as a simple web or file server, and with ReadyCloud, part of the ReadyNAS system, I can create a password-protected, expiring, access-logged link to any file on the NAS. So if I want to deliver files to a client directly from my own server, I can. The problem, of course, is that they could access the file at any time and choke your bandwidth, and the file delivery will only be as fast as your upload speed, so you may be better off using something like WeTransfer, but you have the option, and I've used it. Also, if you do go for the Dropbox business solution, that includes a service like WeTransfer that you can send any size file wherever you want. So there you have it. This is my backup solution that took years to get to, but I absolutely love it. And I know that every night, my fragile RAID 0 RAIDs are backed up to a RAID 6 volume where any two drives can fail and I'd still have access to all of my data. There's a link down below to a page on my website where I've outlined all the hardware used so you can see exactly what everything costs and where to get it if you want to build something like this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.